What is up everybody and welcome back to the BBO bus. Those of you that are new here, thank you so much for following along and welcome to the channel. A few weeks ago, I filmed a bus tour video with my friend Isaac and that is over on his channel. I'll put a link right here in the corner so you can go watch that if you haven't already. I have been living in the bus for just about five weeks now and I think it's about time that we do some review and some talking about how it's going. That being said, I want to start somewhere where a lot of you have questions about. Based on your reactions to the tour video that I did with Isaac, the biggest question that you all had was, where's your toilet? Your questions were warranted. However, now that that is solved, now that I have a toilet solution, I want to talk about my entire bathroom experience here in the bus, what it's like using a tiny bathroom in a short school bus every day. Without further ado, let's talk about the bathroom. Thanks for watching. This is the shower door. I went with a Nautilus retractable RV shower door. There's a thin plastic membrane that acts as the water barrier when you're using the door. And on the handle side, there's a little hook that keeps it closed when you're in the shower or closed when you want it closed. As soon as you release that hook, the spring-loaded mechanism inside the chamber on the other side of the door pulls the membrane back into the door while simultaneously wiping any water residue off of the door so that it doesn't get stuck and moldy inside the chamber. Really slick door, really easy to use, very easy to install. I would recommend this in every bus build because it's a space saver and it looks really good. Moving on to the shower pan, I knew that I would only spend a few minutes a day in the shower. Thus, I wanted to have it take up as little of a footprint inside the bus as possible. The smallest prefabricated shower pan I could find was a 24 by 24. So that's the dimensions that I built this bus shower around. Once I got my pan and my walls were built, it was as easy as throwing on a layer of glue on the bottom and dropping the pan in the floor, ready to go. My wall tiles are Duma wall vinyl bathroom tiles. Now, I didn't want to mess with grout, mortar, and ceramic tiles in, in 100 years in this bus. I knew how much movement, how much shakes, and how much quakes go on when you drive this thing. So ceramic and mortar and grout was off the table. These are the only vinyl tiles I could find online that actually advertise themselves as being waterproof in a wet environment, like shower or bath kind of environment. So that's what I went for. They have tongue and groove joints on the sides and the bottoms and the tops, which makes them really easy to click together, form a waterproof layer, and they look really good too. Because I have such a small space and having multiple design elements next to each other would create too much contrast, I decided to wrap these tiles outside of my shower and around through my kitchen backsplash, and I'm really stoked with how it turned out. The light inside my shower is attached to the dimmer switch that goes with my kitchen under cabinets. That way I don't have any exposed wiring inside my wet environment of the shower. Having a soft yet direct light source inside the shower is just really nice. It means I can see everything in the shower. I can find my soaps and shampoos with no problem. It's the same light setup as I did with the rest of the lights in the bus as far as having aluminum channel and LED strip light inside. The shower head and shower handle both came from Amazon. They're made by different manufacturers, yet they look really good together and I'm very stoked with how they turned out. The shower head is actually just a shower wand that you would usually add as an accessory to your normal shower, but I'm using it as my main head because I don't need multiple shower heads in this tiny space. And having the ability to remove it from the, from the wall and direct water where I need it to is essential in this small of a shower space. This little towel hanger in the back was a total afterthought. I was walking through Ikea and I saw it and I thought, hmm, I could use that as a towel hanger. We'll see if it works. It is really nice to be able to hang my towel and let it dry, not in my living space. I don't wanna, I don't wanna look at that. I don't want to bump into it. I don't wanna be messing around with it or hanging it on a chair or a table while it's drying. As I was building my walls, I noticed a little bit of space. My space saver efficiency mind thought I need to make a shower cubby out of that in order to really maximize my storage space. And I'm super glad that I did. It was a lot of work to get this small of a little cubby to actually work well, like drills don't even fit in there, you know? So it was a pain in the butt to figure out how to build it and how to attach it properly, but it fits body wash, shampoo, face wash, and a razor, and that's all I need to have in a shower. 
and they don't even fall out when I drive. I left them in there by accident the first time after I set up my shower and they didn't even fall out. So now I just leave them there permanently. The last piece of the shower that you'll see is this little mirror. I got it from a brand called Tooletries. They make these silicon based shower wall accessories like this mirror. They have soap holders, razor holders, beer caddies if that's what you're into with your shower time. The last part of my bathroom that a lot of you have been wondering about is what do I do for a toilet? I have this Kildwick composting toilet. It is made and produced in Germany and in my opinion I think they're the most elegant and the best looking composting toilets you can find on the internet and that's why I chose to go with these. They're beautiful, they work well and what else do you need? It's a freestanding unit which means it's not hardwired in with a fan and it's also not hard plumbed in to deal with my liquids. So I do have two separate collection vessels inside. When you open the lid, you'll see the toilet seat. That is actually attached by magnets, which makes it really easy to clean since there's no, no hardware parts that interact with each other to collect dust or grime or moisture or whatever. You just take the seat off and wipe off the separator. Underneath the seat is the urine separator that directs ones to the front, twos to the back, and then they get collected in separate units underneath the separator. You sprinkle a little composting medium on the on the solids in the back and then you dispose of the liquids when you have an opportunity as well as the solids you take those and put them in the proper disposing receptacle at your best convenience. When people ask me does it smell? I really don't think so. Like I have not had a lot of experience with it smelling. Now yes, obviously if you leave human waste sitting in a box in a small vehicle for weeks at a time, it will smell. So I don't recommend that. It's actually this li the liquids that smell worse than the solids. I really haven't smelled the solids whatsoever. The liquids, if you let that sit in there slowly, the water will evaporate, and then you're gonna be left with um, a highly concentrated form of urine. And that does start to smell if you leave it and let it sit for too long. And that is it for my bathroom tour. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit more information about how I clean myself and how I use the bathroom here in the bus. It's a very simple system, yet it took a lot of design and a lot of intention to get it to actually work in this kind of space. If you have any questions or things that you think I missed, just drop it down below in the comments and I'll do, I'll do my best to reply to everything that I can. In the meantime, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for following along in this journey. Don't forget to like the video down below and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna make another video coming out in a couple weeks talking about my kitchen and how I prep meals and how I design that space to be as ergonomic as possible. That is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time in the BBA bus. Bye.